good afternoon everyone i welcome you all in this session as you are aware in previous session we discussed about sampling and sampling distribution in fact in one of the very few lectures i talked about types of statistics wherein i said that uh, there are two types of statistics descriptive statistics and inferential statistics so far whatever we have seen in this course we have seen everything about descriptive statistics now onwards we we'll look at inferential statistics and i said there are two ways of inferential statistics there are two types of uh, inferential statistics are two methods of inferential statistics the first one is estimation and the second one is hypothesis testing so we'll look at first one which is estimation or we'll look at first the confidence interval estimation uh, generally what happens whenever we try to do something we try to let's say uh, how much time it will take from rudki to delhi right by bus then you always estimate the travel time whether it would be 4 hours or 4 hours 30 minutes or uh, let's say if you are if you want to cross a, a road then you always estimate the speed of vehicles coming from either sides right and then only you take decision whether you should cross the road or not similarly in in business world as well uh, managers have to make several estimations uh, let's say uh, a manager uh, an hr manager wants to know uh, what is the uh, on an average how many employees miss the office Uh, in a year right so one method is that he should note down how many employees did not come to the office on all 365 days or for whatever number of days that office was remained open or what the manager can do he can take average number of days work an employee misses per year so he will take a few employees and he will find out that Uh, on an average uh, 10 employees did not come for let's say 10 days so on the basis of that the manager can estimate about the population information in this case what is uh, the the average number of uh, days all the employees of the organization miss the office right uh, let's look at one more example Uh, let's say a cellular phone company wants to know the average talk time of the uh, mobile phone users now the mobile company has got let's say bills of all the customers who are using that company's mobile phone so rather than looking at all those uh, bills what company can do is it can select few bills and can estimate about the average time of all the customers of that mobile phone uh, company so uh, and th this is known as and th in fact there are two types of estimates you got point estimate and the other one is interval estimate so whatever we have seen over here in this example and in this example we we just calculated point estimation in point estimation is is something where in you will have just one one number right for example cellular company wants to uh, ascertain the average number of minutes so that that uh, let's say for uh, simplicity answer is 120 minutes right so this is just one number so this this known as point estimate right so of course it's a statistics taken from sample which we used to estimate about population parameter right so apart from point estimation you always have one more estimation is called interval estimation right uh, to give you one more example let's say what would be the india's gdp in next financial year so let's say some of you will say 7.5% or uh, let's say the growth rate would be 8% and so on so this is nothing but point estimation right you can always have something called interval estimation interval estimation is 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 a range so let's say the india's gdp growth rate in next year would be 8 to 
nine percent. So this this is interval estimation, right? So the range is just one point, right? So an interval estimate is a range of values within which the analyst can declare with some confidence the population parameter. So we will say that the India's GDP would lie between 8 to 9 percent, right. So it provides additional information about variability of the estimate, right, how much variability is there in the estimation. So let us say India's GDP is uh, the, the interval is 7 to 10, so here variability is more, here variability is less. So, this is let us say your point estimate and this is your interval estimate. So, you will have upper limit and, and lower limit, right. So, what is estimation? Estimation is to uh, is, is, is sample statistics which will help you in knowing about population parameter and you have got either point estimation or interval estimation. So, we will say that uh, this is sample mean is estimator of population mean, sample proportion is estimator of population proportion, right. So, let us look at this example. The Greenboro Coliseum is considering expanding its seating capacity and needs to know both the average number of people who attend events there and the variability in this number. The following are the attendees, are the attendances in, 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 in thousands, right, 9 randomly selected sporting events, find the point estimate of the mean and the variance of the population from which the sample was drawn. So, these are total 9 randomly, you know, so 9 samples which we have selected randomly. So, what would you do it? was the question we have to estimate the population parameter right or the mean first of all. So, calculate mean and variance. So, it is very simple just uh, uh, summation of all these divided by 9 is not it. So, this is is what sample mean is not it, it is 14.27 and uh, for calculating variance sample variance this summation of x square minus n into x square divided by n minus 1. So, variance is 21.119, right. So, this was just uh, an example on point estimation. Let us look at this question. For a population with known variance, now variance is known here 185 and a sample of 64 individual so, n is 64 leads to this much mean. So, x bar is 217. Now, we have to find out standard error of the mean. In fact, we have seen this type of question in, in, in uh, sampling and sampling distribution chapter as well. Establish an interval estimate. So, the first part is find standard error. Establish. So, let us let us find out standard error since variance is there you just take under root of this right. So, this would be the standard error. So, once standard error is known we can calculate interval estimate that should include population mean this much percent of the time ok. So, this is your standard error 1.70. Now, since this is known, you know the population mean, uh, so, sorry, you know the sample mean, right, this 217. So, 217 plus minus this 1.70. So, this is the interval. So, what, what is our answer? Establish an interval estimate that should include the population mean this much percentage of time. So, what is that interval? Interval is 215.32 8.7, right. Let us look at one more question, this is quite an interesting one. Given the following confidence level, 
express the lower and upper limits of the confidence interval for these levels in terms of x bar and standard error right so we have to find out upper and lower limits so how to do that let's let's look at this this is the answer to this question so x bar plus minus 0.74 standard deviation or standard error right so 0.74 from where did we get 0.74 we know that this area is 50% this area is 50% isn't it so when we say 54% so what we have to do is 54 54 by 100 it, it is point uh, in fact uh, this becomes 0.54 isn't it so this side is how much how much would be this side if you divide 0.54 into two parts then it would be 0 0.27 isn't it one side it is 0 0.27 so let's let's call it okay let me erase this first so when 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 this is 54% so each side is 0 0.27 right so this 0 0.27 now look at this table where probability is 0.27 so this is point no so when the area is uh, where this probability is 0.27 let's look at this where it, where it is 0.27 is somewhere here right this is here isn't it so this is z value is 0.74 isn't it so this is what we have written here 0.74 isn't it and the next one is 75 percent how to find out these probabilities this 75 percent half of this is what so just 0 0.75 divided by 2 so this is 0.3 then 7 right approximately 0 0.375 isn't it okay 0 0.375 is where is 0 0.37 so 0 0.3536 this is somewhere here somewhere here 0.375 somewhere here right 0.374 so somewhere here right so this is 1.14 or 15 isn't it? so this is exactly 1.15 okay so for for remaining ones how would you calculate what it would be for this let's say 0 0.98 0 0.98 divided by 2 so it would be 0.49 isn't it 0.49 is where this is 0 0.4890 point 0.49 let's look at this isn't it so this is let's let's call it 2.40 isn't it or uh, let's say yeah, exactly it is 2.33 let let's look at 2.33 so 2.3 yes 0.49 and this is 0.49 Zero 01 this is what we look we are looking for right so approximate value you have to write over here so if, even if you write let's say 2.34 then also the 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 answer would be correct right so this is how you should be calculating these z values if you are given these uh, probabilities right in terms of percentage let's look at confidence interval once again so it, it tells you how much uncertainty is associated with point estimate of a population parameter so an interval estimate provides more information rather than point estimation right such interval estimates are called confidence intervals right so 
the intervals would be called confidence interval. So, because we will we will say that we are 95 percent confident, we will say that we are 90 percent confident and so on right. So, it gives you a range I have already talked about this. It takes into account variation in sample statistics from sample to sample right based on observations generally we calculate uh, interval estimate on the basis of just one sample there is no need of taking uh, several samples to know about population parameter gives information about closeness to unknown population parameter we do not know the population parameter so stated in terms of level of confidence so uh, there are two things there is something called confidence level and there is something called confidence interval so the confidence interval is the range within which population parameter will fall right so you have got upper limit and you have got lower limit right so this is and in in this your population parameter will fall so this confidence interval right confidence level is the probability that the the population parameter will fall in this range so, one is probability and the other one is range. Let us take uh, uh, there is an assembly line and uh, cereal is being filled in uh, plastic uh, let us say pouch or, or in a container plastic container and we know that the weight of the uh, container from past data the population mean is this and standard deviation of weight is 15. If you take a sample of 25 units or 25 bags and when you come up with 95 percent confidence interval, then you will say that this is the confidence interval. So, we will say that when we take a sample of 25 packets, the mean weight, uh, inter the interval of the mean weight would be 362.122 373.88 and how to get this this is something which you need to keep in mind so this mean 368 plus minus this is what uh, you have to calculate from z well z table right so uh, when you say 95% means what 0.95 right isn't it so 0.95 so, 50 percent of this would be point let us say point 0.475 is not it. So, point 0.475 is where in this table point 0.475, point 0.46, point 0.475 is here right this is the exact value point 0.475 is not it. So, z value is 1.96 this is 1.9 and this is 6. Let us take uh, an example where population mean is not there, it is not given. Then what you should do? You should take a sample mean, uh, sample mean instead of population mean. So, let us put sample mean over here 362.33 plus minus same value, right. So, this is your interval estimate. So, 356.42 to 368.18. So, what we have said that if we take a sample of size 25 and sample mean is this, then the confidence interval would be this much. Now, if you take another sample of 25 sample size you will have this mean different is not it this value will remain constant, but your interval will change is not it. So, what we are saying what we have just done is this our sample mean was this when we took 25 samples lower limit was this upper limit was this and uh, whether this Lim this this uh, interval contains population mean what was population mean 368 yes it does contain 
Let us take one more sample of 25 uh, units, its, it's sample mean is this, does it contain population mean, does this range contain population mean, yes, here it does not, in this case it does not contain. So, when you take here you have taken 5 samples, each time sample size was 25 and you calculated confidence interval and in one of them the population mean was not there. So, what is the meaning of 95 percent? Generally in real life as I said, we will take just one sample and we will uh, develop confidence interval. In real life we do not know population mean because if, if we know population mean, uh, then, then in fact uh, you would uh, also be knowing something called standard deviation, is not it? So, that that is a different issue altogether, let us focus on this. But in real life we really do not know population mean. So, what we are saying based on one sample which we have selected, 95 percent of the confident you, you can be 95 percent confident your interval will contain mu and this is known as 95 percent confidence interval. So, what is the meaning of 95 percent confidence interval? The uh, based on the sample which you select, you can be 95 percent confident that your interval will contain population mean and this is the meaning of 95 percent confidence interval. So, what we have done here is, we have estimated population proportion from sample, right. So, this is population, so mean is unknown initially, we will take a sample, let us say its mean is 50 and we will say, I am 95 percent confident that the population mean would be between 40 and 60, right. So, you can have different confidence level or confidence interval, right. This is known as estimation process. So, this is the general formula though we have already seen this and we have solved an example as well. So, point estimate is equal to is equal to uh, plus minus critical value multiplied by standard error. So, this is the simple statistic estimating population parameter, right. This point estimate critical value of course, it will come from z table, right. And this table, uh, this table value would be depending upon desired confidence level. For 90 percent it would be difficult, different and for 91 percent it would be different and so on. And standard error is the standard deviation of the point estimate, right. Confidence level as I have already said, confidence level is, is the probability, right. So, generally we write confidence level as this 1 minus alpha, ok. The remaining things are we have already discussed. So, let us find out confidence interval for population mean. Now, we can calculate confidence interval for population proportion as, as well, population variance as well, right. So, you can have different types of population parameters, right. So, first we will look at population mean, confidence interval for population mean and in this case first we will look at when standard deviation of population is, is known, right. So, we will take this situation where standard deviation is known, ok. So, there are couple of assumptions you have to make, the first is the population standard deviation is known second is population is normally distributed, right. It is not for non-normal population, right. It is for normal distribution. If population is, is not normal, then we will have to take a large sample, right. So, the confidence interval estimate is this, the sample mean, this critical value and this standard error, is not it? This is what we have seen in the formula. So, this is point estimate our sample mean, this is normal distribution critical value and this is standard error, ok. So, let us look at one question and before this 
as I said this is your confidence level this is generally we represent it by 1 minus alpha. So, when I say confidence level is let us say 90 percent. So, this area is 90 percent and the remaining area is 10 percent this side 10 percent this side sorry if this is 90 percent then this area is 5 percent and this remaining area is 5 percent. So, if if let us say confidence level is 80 percent right. So, this is 80 percent this is 10 percent and this is 10 percent. So, this total becomes 100 percent right and for 95 percent confidence interval we have already seen z value is 1.96 is not it. Let us look at uh, other values in, in z table. So, when confidence level is 95 percent z value is 1.96, but what if it is 80 percent how would you calculate this? What is the z value when confidence level is 80 percent? So, 80 percent means what 0 0.80 it means both sides you will have 0.4 this side and this side 0.4. So, let us look at where where is 0.4 in this table. So, 0.4 this is 0.4 approximately in fact, this is even closer to that right 0.3997 right uh, approaching 0.4. So, we will take 1.28. So, this 1.28 is not it this 1.2 and this is 0 0.08 right. So, just add these two values right. What about uh, let us say 90 percent what is the z value when confidence level is 90 percent. So, this 0 0.9 divided by 2 right is 0 0.45 is not it. So, 0 0.45 is where this is this is somewhere here right this is somewhere here. So, we will say this 1.6 4 right you, you can this is 1.64 and if you want to take average you just take average you will get exact 0.45. So, this would be 1.645 is it. So, this is how you should be calculating z value for a given value of confidence level. This is a similar table generally you should keep in mind that we always uh, uh, estimate our uh, point estimation and uh, in uh, uh, interval estimation on these three confidence level 99 percent, 95 percent and 90 percent right. Generally, we do not test our hypothesis and uh, other things uh, at let us say 50 percent or 40 percent. So, just keep in mind that it is always 90 percent, 95 percent and 99 percent. So, this is interval and, uh, and level of confidence. So, this is your confidence level let us say this is 90 percent when this is 90 percent this is 5 percent this is 5 percent. So, total is 100 percent. So, this is your population parameter mu here and these are your sample means let us say first sample mean is this right for some other sample sample mean is this and so on right. So, all these are in this range right except this one which is outside the limit ok. So, you can easily calculate uh, this uh, lower limit and upper limit. So, x bar minus critical value this is critical value and this is standard error right and similarly this side as well ok. Let me uh, summarize what we did in today's session. We have looked at uh, estimation and uh, estimation is nothing but is is a kind of inferential statistics wherein on the uh, on the basis of mean of the sample we try to estimate population mean. And we have seen uh, something like con, uh, point estimation 
and uh, interval estimation in point estimation you have just one value in interval estimation you got range. We have also seen how to look at uh, z value from table for a given confidence level. So, whatever is the confidence level if it is let us say 80, so 0 0.4, 0 0.4 both sides of uh, distribution from mean and look at uh, the value of z where uh, probability is 0 0.40. So, with this let me complete today's session, we will have a couple of examples on estimation in next session, thank you.